Hello students, myself Dr. Madhav Sarode, Associate Professor in Physics, Restriction Samsung Mahatmapali Mahavidyalaya Pimpri, Pune Satra. Today, in this video lectures, I am going to talk about the complex numbers. Those syllabus is included in the Savitrubai Pune University at the SYBSC in semester 1. So last time we studied about the complex number. So what is complex number? Algebra of the complex numbers and the different forms of the complex number such as polar form, exponential form, etc. Last time in the last video we studied uh, these complex numbers. Today actually I am going to start about the different uh, things whatever included in this video lecture that is Demo's theorem, the power of the complex number, the roots of the complex number and logarithm of the complex number such as parts including in this video we are going to study it about this. So let us see complex number. So last time we studied the complex number. What is complex number? Then we studied about the algebra of the complex numbers and also we studied about the Urban diagrams and the different forms of the complex number. Today in this video lectures we are going to discuss about a important theorem. That theorem is known as the De Moivre theorem. And this De Moivre theorem we have to state. And this theorem is basically is useful to find the powers and the roots of complex number. Means we know that how to determine the roots, how to find the powers of the complex number. We know that the complex number is consists of the real parts and imaginary parts. So that's why this domain's theorem is states that that is cos theta plus i sin theta raised to n is equal to cos n theta plus i sin n theta. So this domain's theorem basically is so, uh, using uh, with help of the other theorem, uh, theorem in this one. So basically this question is arises for this exam. So state the Demos theorem. So basically we have to write the cos theta plus i sin theta is to n is equal to cos n theta plus i sin n theta where n is power. Then with help of this other formula, so we write this a familiar the formula cos theta plus i sin theta is equal to e raised to i theta or cos theta minus i sin theta is nothing nothing but over t e raised to minus i theta. So with help of this one can be written cos theta plus i sin theta raised to n means cos theta plus i sin theta is basically e raised to i theta. So that's why when you take the nth power at that time these terms can be written e raised to i theta into e raised to i theta into e raised to i theta. So this e raised to i theta is n times this one and we know that the base of this one is the same and therefore the addition of the power and that's we get e raised to n i theta means i theta plus i theta plus i theta how many times that is n, n terms will get and finally we get e raised to i n theta or it can be written e raised to i theta i n theta in this one. So therefore cos theta plus i sin theta raised to n is nothing but what e raised to i n theta. Then i n theta with the help of this most theorem can be written cos n theta plus i n sin n theta is this one and hence we prove that the de Moivre theorem is nothing but cos theta plus i sin theta raised to n is equal to cos n theta plus i sin n theta is this one. So this is the de Moivre theorem and this theorem is really useful in case of the polar form of the complex number whatever the power if you are given and we can determine the power of the complex number. Okay, so with help of this domain's theorem, we find the power of the complex number. For this purpose, let us consider the complex number z equal to x plus i1, where x is the real parts and y is nothing but imaginary parts. And n power of the complex number z is always we can write that is z raised to n. And therefore, the exponential power of the complex number z already we studied in the last lecture and that z equal to e raised to i equal to r e raised to i theta. So this is the exponential form of the complex number is this one. And then we are using this Demos theorem z raised to n. We are taking the nth power of the both sides. So that equation becomes z raised to n equal to r e raised to i theta raised to n. Or when simplified, so individually we will take the power n. So that is r raised to n e raised to i n theta. And then Demos theorem states that cos theta plus i sin theta raised to n equal to cos n theta plus i sin n theta. Therefore, e raised to i theta can be written z raised to n, r raised to n, and this e raised to i n theta is basically that is the Demos theorem cos n theta plus i sin.
sin tangent theta. So the last equation represent the power of the complex number. Means n is the power, and we, we are given any power. So we have to find the power of the two or three or four. I mean that is z square or z cube or z is to four. Put the value of n equal to respectively the power, and to obtain the so value of r and theta, respectively r is known as the modulus of the complex number, and theta is known as the argument. And this r and theta we can obtain with help of this complex number z equal to x plus i y. Okay, so we know that last time we studied some examples on this one. Then value of this power is always greater than equal to one in this one. It's not negative. It is a power of this one or of zero. If z is to zero, that value is one. So we can obtain the power. So that's why the power should be greater than equal to one in this one. And this is a simple example, uh, respectively, about this complex number. In this equation, we have given minus root three plus i is to four. It means. Root 3 plus i. This is the complex number, which is the real parts in minus root 3 and i, the imaginary parts in 1. And the power is 4. Means here to find the power of the complex number, fourth power. And first, we have to write this equation in terms of the standard form a plus b i. So sometimes in some reference books they are using the word x plus i y in this one. Okay. So with help of this one, this equation we obtain the value of r. That's r is equal to 2. And theta here we obtain, and then theta we get by by six. We know that how to find the r and how to find the theta. So r can be obtained the square root of x square plus y square. But x equal to minus root three and y equal to one. So root three square is three and one square is one. So three plus one that is four, and the square root of four that is the two. So first term we get the two. And cos theta is given that is the tan inverse y upon x. Y is one and x is root three. One upon root three. That's why it is pi by six, and that's why theta is pi by six, and we are putting these values in the polar path with this one. Okay. Means we are putting n equal to four, fourth power. So we are using the formula z raised to n is equal to cos n theta plus i sine n theta. See last last equation is that two raised to n, two raised to n, n means what? That is the fourth power. So that's why you putting the value n equal to four, and then four, four is the new n, four into pi by six, that is the theta, that is the n theta. Okay, plus i side n theta is this one. So this is the complex form of the see which 2 raised to 4 that is equal to 16 and 5 is 6 by 3 is this one and we know that the 4 that is the power of the complex number when we simplify it and finally we get this simplification cos 4 pi is minus 1 by 2 and sin 4 pi is root 3 by 2. And then it becomes the complex number plus b that is minus a minus r a root 3 this one. So this example how to find the power of the complex number is this one. So that final answer of this power of the complex number is minus a minus i a root 3 this one. Okay. Now the second point is that that's important. So we know that the Demoist theorem is useful for to find the powers of complex number as well as roots of the complex number. Then the second point is that to determine the roots of the complex number. So how to find the roots of the complex number? So what is the meaning of the roots? This we know that the square root or cube root or fourth fourth root or fifth root is this one. So how to find the roots of the complex number? So for this example, let us consider again this complex number z equal to x plus i y. And the roots of the complex number can be written z raised to 1 by m, where n is the root, that is the root, in which nth root is this one. So z is to 1 upon n. Suppose we want to find the second root, means 2. Means at that time z equal to 1 by 2. z equal to 1 by 2 means that is the square root. Isn't it? Suppose if we find the third, uh, third root of the complex number, means z is to 1 by 3, etc. So such a type of the complex number we have solving the help of this one. So how to find the roots of the complex number? So again using the exponential form that is z equal to r e raise to i theta. And we know that we take the root of this complex number, means we take 1 upon nth root of this complex number. So taking both sides, uh, z raised to 1 raised to 1 upon n, again r e i theta raised to 1 upon n. We simplify it, r raised to 1 upon n and e raised to i theta upon n is this one. Then this complex number, this value of this theta, theta is the new that is the argument, and this argument is basically if you change the value. Means theta changes from what at 2 pi k, where k is nothing more that is the constant, integer is this one, that is k equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. But 
when the value of theta increases by 2 pi k, therefore the complex number does not change. It means the value of the complex number is as it is. And that's why if the value of theta is increases by theta plus 2 k pi, this time this complex number can be written as like this j raised to 1 upon n, that is r raised to 1 upon n, and e raised to i. Theta will be increased about 2 pi k. That's why we are adding this one, theta plus 2 pi k, and divided by n. Okay, and then we are using the Demoer's uh, theorem is this one, and finally that value we get r is to 1 upon n cos e raise to i theta. We know that i theta. That's why we are using cos n theta plus i sin n theta. So this theta plus 2 pi k upon n and i sin theta plus 2 pi k upon n because we are adding the value 2 pi k because the complex number does not change, and that's why this relation j raise to 1 upon n r is to 1 upon n cos theta plus 2 pi k upon n plus i sin theta plus 2 pi k upon n. So this is the standard uh, formula to find the roots of the complex number. Means here again to find the value of r, again to find the value of theta, respectively r is the modulus of complex number, can be determined by root of a square plus y square and theta can be determined the element that is tan inverse y upon x and putting these values. What about k? k depends upon whatever the roots to obtain. Suppose we want to find the fourth root. Means at that time we want to take the first root is k equal to 0, k equal to 1, k equal to 2, k equal to 3. We get the four roots. Means at that time we take the value. So we will be understand after this example when we take this one. And it gives n distinct values of the j is known upon n for k equal to 1, 2, 3, 9. So on that is up to the n minus 1. And therefore the roots of the complex number finally we have tried that is z, uh, z raised to 1 upon n, r raised to 1 upon n, cos theta, plus, theta upon n plus 2 k pi upon n plus i sin theta upon n plus 2 k pi upon n. Separate we, uh, data, uh, we can write for our convenience. Okay. So where k is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3. So k equal to 0 we get the first root. k equal to 1 we get the second root. k equal to 2 we get the second Such a way that to find the complex roots of the complex number with the help of this one. Okay, so see, uh, let us uh, let me consider the simple example for the to determine the fourth root of i. See, what the example is given. Determine the fourth roots of i. The fourth roots of i means what z equal to z equal to i. This is the complex number is given. But this i is nothing but imaginary number. We know that the standard form of the complex number z equal to a plus b i or x plus i y. So here, real, real parts is 0, so that's why I am not in part of the convenience, we have written here z equal to 0 plus i. And here, x equal to 0 and y equal to 1, when you compare the standard form at that time. And then modules of the complex number are going to be determined z equal to r, that is root x square plus y square. And putting the value x and y, we get the value of r is 1. Similarly, to determine the element of complex number, and then tan inverse y upon x. We are putting the value y equal to 1 and x equal to 0. No, 1, 0 is infinity and tan inverse is infinity is always at theta equal to pi by 2. That's why the value of this uh, theta equal to pi by 2. Means we know that the value of r equal to 1, theta equal to pi by 2. And then the roots of the complex number is given by this formula already we studied. That is z is 1 upon n is equal to r is 1 upon n plus theta plus theta upon n plus 2 by k upon n and plus i sin theta upon n plus 2 by k upon n is this one. And we have to find the fourth roots of i, so that's why we have to select the value of this k is 0, 1, 2, and 3. So we get this. And let the first root that is z0, the second root z1, third root is z2, and third, fourth root is z3, with the values of the fourth roots of the z. And that's why if k equal to 0, means at that time z we can put this z0 of this one. What is the value of n? n is 4. So that's why r is 1. So 1 raised to 1 upon 4. Cos theta, theta is over pi by 2 and divided by n, n is over 4. Similarly, i sin theta is over pi by 2 divided by 4 because k equal to 0, second term is vanishes. And therefore, the first root of the complex number 1 into cos pi by 8 plus i sin pi by 8 is this. Similarly, to find the second root that is z1, means at that time k equal to what? k equal to 1. k equal to 1, means at that time k equal to k equal to 0, at that time we get the z equal to 0, that is 1 upon 1 raised to 1 by 4, means z 0, that is 1 cos pi by 8 plus i sin pi by 8 is this one. Okay, so then k equal to 1, means at that time 
What will get? If you put the value of k equal to 1, so then what k equal to 1 is 2 pi upon n, this 2 pi upon 4. And theta is what pi by 2, means pi by 2 plus 2 pi by 4, that's why you will get 5 pi 8 is this one. Plus I said 5 pi pi 8 is this one. So this is the second rule. Similarly, the next root is what? That is j3. Means at that time k equal to 2. When you put the k equal to 2, that will get to 4 pi upon 4. And we take the addition pi by 2, and that's why it is 9 pi by 8 is this one again. The second equation we get the cos of 9 pi upon 8 plus i sin pi by 8 and take for the pi upon 9 pi upon 8 plus i sin 9 pi upon 8. Similarly, the another example for this one, find the root of this, uh, fifth roots of this minus 2 root 3 plus 2 i is this one. Okay, so similarly you can determine the complex uh, roots of this one, five complex roots. Again here we get the Z1, Z2 and Z3, Z4 because Z0, Z1, Z2, Z3. First to find out the value of R, then find the value of theta. So here R equal to 4 and theta is what? 150 degree. By pi is this one. And putting this value that simplification will get the roots of the complex number this one. For k equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 is this one. Okay, so these are the roots of the complex number respectively k equal to 1, k equal to 0, that is uh, 4 raised to 4 by 5, cos 30 plus i sin 30, similarly z1, 4 raised to 4 by 5, cos 102 plus i sin 102, and z2, that is 4 raised to 4 by 5, cos 174 plus i sin 174, and z3 is cos 246 plus i sin 246 degrees, this one. These are the different fourth but fifth root is what k equal to 4, and z is 2, that is 4 raised to 1 by 5 cos 318 degree plus i sin 318 degree. These are the fifth roots of the complex number. If the complex number is given. So, simple way we have this 1 upon n cos theta upon n plus 2 pi k upon n plus i sin theta upon n plus 2 pi k upon n. And then we get the roots of the complex numbers. And the last point for this uh, video lecture that is the logarithm of the complex number. How to find? We are given the log complex number and then we take the logarithm of this complex number. So let us consider the complex number z equal to x plus i y and then these complex numbers we have to take the logarithm that is in terms of ln of z. ln of z means what? If the base of this logarithm is exponential, that is e. Sometimes they have certain book they have written that log z is this one. So therefore ln z is nothing but the logarithm of complex number. Okay. So again using this exponential form, that exponential form equal to what? Z equal to r e raised to i theta. And taking logarithm of this exponential form, means z equal to r e raised to i theta, taking the log both sides. Log both sides is what that is z equal to ln of r e raised to i theta is this one. So ln z, ln of r e raised to i theta. Using the definition of the logarithm, ln z is that we have to put for our continuous value of p. So therefore p equal to ln r e raised to i theta is this one. But we know that if log a into p, so with the simple definition of the log a plus a into p can be written log a plus log p. And that's why it becomes ln r plus ln e raised to i theta. Product rules basically we are using here. And we know that r, r is the modulus of the complex number and theta is the argument in this one. So therefore this Logarithm of the complex number, that's why we get ln of r plus i theta. Because ln e raised to i theta, so that is logarithm to the base is e. And we know that ln log base to the e, that value is always 1. So therefore, this value is vanishes exponential and the terms is remain that is i theta. And phi equal to ln of r plus i theta, which is the standard form of the logarithm of complex number. Any complex number is given and find the logarithm of this complex number, so we can take the log of value of r and r we know that that is the complex modulus of the complex number which can determine root x square plus y square and theta is the argument of the complex number can be determined with the help of the tab source of y upon x and this the standard result of the logarithm of the complex number so very different example for this value of this ln minus 5 example determine the value of my, uh, logarithm of minus 5 how to find the log of this minus 5 so see Simple solution of this one, the given 
Complex number is denoted minus z equal to minus 5. But this minus 5 is not the standard form. So standard form can be real parts and imaginary parts. So imaginary parts is 0. So that's why it can be written minus 5 plus 0 r is of the form x plus i r. So here x equal to 5 compared and y equal to 0. Then first to determine modulus of the complex number z. And this complex number z is equal to r. That should x square plus y square is this one. Therefore r equal to 5. Similarly, the argument can be determined with the help of the tan inverse y upon x. y is 0, x is minus 5, 0 for anything is 0, so tan inverse 0 always at the angle 5. And that's why theta argument is 5. Hence, we know the value of r 5, we know the value of theta is 5. And the logarithm of the complex number is given, just we obtain that is ln z is equal to ln of r, that is i theta. Put the value, z is minus 5, r is what? 5 and theta is 5. So ln 5 plus i 5. Take the log with the help of the log table. And that value is 1.6095 and that value pi, pi is this one. So this is a way to find the logarithm of the complex, uh, complex number for minus 5 is this one. Similarly, we take different examples we can take. Okay, so this is another example in, uh, here basically to study about the power, power of the complex number is this one. So we can, this is for your homework, you can do, uh, find or you simplify or point to 1 by 2 plus 2, i root 3 by 2 raised to 6 minus 1 by 2 minus i root 3 upon 2 raised to 6. So this is the power of the complex number. Means let me consider first complex number, second we call it z1, z2 and find out the value of r and theta and put the value in the form of the power of the complex number is this one. So this is the problem is for your homework is this one. So next again, problem is given for the homework again that is 1 plus i raised to 8 plus 1 minus i raised to 8 to simplify. Again, this is the power of complex number. Okay, so similarly to find out this one, the answer of this one is maybe 0 is this one. So, next problem is given for the homework that is uh, ln 1 plus i root 3. Take the logarithm of 1 plus i root 3 is this one. Again, you have to first to find the value of r. Okay, r equal to root 3 x square plus y square x value will get the 2 here 2 is this one and this theta is 5 by 3. Okay. And with the help of this, we studied in this video lecture that is the De Moore's theorem. Then, how to find the power of the complex number, then how to find the roots of the complex number, then how to determine the logarithm of the complex number. Thank you.